Okay, my friends, it's Roger from the Fossil Universe, and even if I could say that this was red laser pulsed red laser light, which it is, and then I could say that was that pulsed red laser light accelerating, which it is, and then I could say that is the particle that is the light particle, which it is, and then I could say that is how the light particle is constructed as a photon with two bla a black and a white and a black and a white back up upside down against each other like two bar magnets which it is and then if I could say that if we could harvest this particular spray of electron neutrinos that do not include muon neutrinos and they appear to be 80 billion times let me say that again 80 billion times more powerful than they were back here. If I could harvest this in between this portion here and this portion here when they come back to becoming their less powerful counterparts, if we could take this portion somehow, and I haven't got the answer to that, but in here if we could put some form of a cup in here with a diffuser that brought it into some form of a containment vessel or fluid or whatnot. Now it's being done in Brown's gas and I have looked at that and it is absolutely fascinating. Brown's gas is nothing more than water that has accepted extra electrons. Now let's see if we can come up with some free energy. I, I can't see it's a big deal to do this. Hydrogen H2O is nothing more than Hydrogen and oxygen, the two of them together, makes it the most explosive gas in the entire world. So why can't we somehow figure a way to harvest them into a non-polluting energy source? And I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to do it extremely efficiently. Let's look. Okay, it's Roger at Mud Fossil University. I'm going to make this extremely easy. I think we can get free energy. And why do I say that? Here's why. The nucleus of all atoms it consists of electrons, not protons and neutrons, electrons. Electrons make up protons and neutrons. The protons and neutrons are certain numbers of electrons that become stable and the proton is basically stable at 1837 and the neutron is 1838 in my model electron flood model now what is an electron made of it's made of a strong force and a weak force and you see them there's a white ball and a black ball together just like that like an eight ball like a, like a figure eight a white and a black and I'm going to show them to you I've shown them a million times now what happens is the weak force and we know this and they, they agree with this it will congest to each other it doesn't matter they, they touch each other but the strong explosive force will not get along with each other and they explode so as they come in contact in light the black ball rolls away and the white ball explodes like an atomic bomb. Back to back, these, this causes what's called an electron. Right? It has a strong and a weak and it will always stay like that and they'll be in electricity and wires and heat and everything. However, when you put them through a venturi like this, I'll show you this in a second, the first thing that will happen is they'll show themselves as the photons that they are which they will always be attached back to back. They're not, you don't have, well, there's, a, there's, there's electrons floating in the air attached to water molecules and so forth, static electricity. However, light is a different issue. Light is back to back, glued together electrons, which bounce instead of incorporate themselves into things like lightning and electricity does in static. Now, how did we achieve this? to be able to see this particle. And how did we know that it's a particle? And how do we know it's accelerating? Well, here's what happened. Rod Warren just accidentally doing some experiments, 
on his own, not with anybody affiliated with anything, discovered that when you put red laser, pulse red laser light through a venturi, which is nothing more a restriction, that it forces the white portion to explode concussively and the black portion, which I showed you on these balls, the black ball ro rolls away and the black balls literally roll away out here and they recombine way down the back. But in this area right here, it appears this is boson material. And guess what? Out here, it's one electron volt. Here, it's 80 billion, billion, 80 billion electron volts because we have separated it from its weak charge. And here it is right here. And I'm going to show you these things. Electron neutrino is one electron volt or less. A muon neutrino is, is less than 0.17 mega electron volts. And tau neutrino is less than 18 mega. But the boson is 80 giga electron volts. And the Z bose is 91 giga electron volts. Now I'm going to show you these particles. Now these are things that they just made up and they end up being a photon. These are the particles within the photons. Let's look at that. Okay, don't you forget now, coming from the red laser, we're going to see the light accelerating and then we're going to see it entering the, uh, the venturi and then we're going to see it separating. As it enters the venturi, it has a box configuration like that. These particles are really just like this. The red one here is the explosive part, and the black one attached together, just like this, is not explosive. I'm going to show that. Back to back, they make photons. When they hit the venturi, they completely separate, and they end up having a black ball and the red or and white explosive part. And right in here, I believe we have an extreme increase in energy, and it's obvious to, just to watch what happens. All right, now don't forget, now this is exclusively from our research, and that is the pulse red laser. The particle is actually right there, and it's way inside the wave. The wave is only the ball that concusses going forward. And if you want to visualize what that looks like, it looks like this right here. All right? That particle is that particle right here. You see that? That's this particle. When it's in a wave, it's coming through, and everything that's in front of this, I'm, I'm sorry, when it's moving as light, that particle controls a region around itself magnetically. Not, there's no surface here, there's no hard surface. There's a magnetic influence. That's what's happening here. It's this particle. And here it is in, in, in boom, boom, and then it explodes. Now, what happens when it explodes? Well, here's what happens. First of all, the only reason we're seeing it is because we're not seeing it here. Because it's never going to show up there. It's not being accelerated. Here it's being accelerated. It's literally being pulled. The particle here is being pulled to the edge of the wave and then out. Then it explodes here. Now, instead of seeing those four dots together, here we're going to see the white one explode atomically, literally, and we're going to see the black one roll away as what is called the carrier, the carrier boson. Now let's look at that. Now don't forget, let's focus on this first. There's that ball coming through here like this, and then the particle being, being, being sucked right out of there because it has to accelerate through the venturi. There is no option. That's not even anything that's that, I mean, it's completely fully understood. However, what happens from here to here? There is no black particles whatsoever here. The black ones, as I will show you, remove themselves. Okay, one more time. Particles coming in like this. Then they separate. There's the black balls. There is the little tiny black balls that are not in here. None, zero, none whatsoever. And they don't mind being on top of each other and touching each other. Now, 
at a certain distance from the venturi, which is not very far, there's nothing but white particles in here. That, to me, is the bosons, which is the fermion, bosons, call them what you will. They're the explosive part of the particle that is actually, it's, it's the electron. It's the explosive part of an electron because photons are made out of electrons too. So once you break it down to the tiniest thing, everything is made from electrons and then you can break that electron down into the white part and the black part. In between here, all you have is an explosive, extremely concussive part here. They say this is 80 gigavolts. Compared to back before it started to concuss, it was only one electron volt. Here it's 80 giga electron volts. That's 80 billion times more powerful than it was before it impacted. That's a pretty significant increase. Okay, one more time before we hear from the Royal Institute. Leptons, which is why they, well, there's a lot of reasons, but that's one of the reasons they say it doesn't work. The, the original Bohr model, and it doesn't work. There, my electron flood theory works. Now, I showed you what I say is an electron. And it's a particle like that. It has a, one side is positive, one side is negative. It's not just completely negative. And then I showed you the muons and so forth. Now, then I showed you the electron neutrino, which is, gives the showers and explosive, and the muon neutrino, which is the black ball that just rolls away from it. The other one, the electron neutrinos, are the white particles. And then the W boson is the portion where they're separated. And that is 80 giga electron volts. These here is one electron volt. This one's like 0.17 mega electron volts. There's, there's, they're very, very, very weak particles until you can separate them, and we have them separated only for a very short duration of time. But if you can tap into that 80 gigavolts, I mean, it's 80 billion times more than that. And I think with some of the new well, let me just show you one thing I think possible. All right, so don't forget now, at this point, we have nothing but negative portion of the electron. I didn't think it was possible, but we have obviously seen the black balls roll away, and then they reform down here. Now, it also can account for the fact that these could be the dark matter and the dark energy that we just have always known exists but couldn't f really find it because it just doesn't do anything. There's no energy there. It just doesn't display itself. That's the only time I've ever, ever seen it displayed that somebody could say that's probably the dark energy. But it also accounts for the fact that they have lost touch with each other. That ball right there was attached to maybe a white particle's way down here, and this ball over here was maybe attached to something that's going off to that way. My point being is they, they are able to go their own separate ways. Now, will they always come back to the same number? No. And here's why I can say that very factually, because they have determined that. 